Hello everyone and welcome to the AI Plus Club Unilag Virtual Bootcamp on uh, getting started with machine learning. Okay, so um, I'll be taking this class and uh, my name is Raisin Adegwa. I'm a data scientist and researcher at Data Science Nigeria. We are basically do um, research, I'm involved in writing research papers and um, research and product technology and uh, all other stuff, all other fancy stuff. <laughs> So quickly, let's go into what we have for today. So we we're working on this uh, Cindy, Cindy logistic challenge that's hosted on on Zindi. Okay. So if you uh, go to this data, go to this uh, web page, Zindi Africa. Go to their competitions web page. You see this challenge is an archive challenge. Challenge is over, but you can still use this to practice and do some learning. Okay. So basically, what is the challenge about? The challenge is said we should predict the estimated time of arrival for motorbike deliveries in Nairobi. Okay, so this company is actually a logistic company. So what they basically do is uh, deliver orders. So they are trying to uh, optimize their process in such a way that, given um, maybe um, features about the uh, products they want to deliver, the name of the place, the name of the customer, the location of the customer, uh, for example, temperature and stuff like that. Given these features, can they predict when the delivery will take place? The time, particular time where the delivery will actually, or, the, or how long the delivery will take to get to that particular place. Okay, so this is basically what you are trying to predict. So this is a regression problem, okay, because you are trying to predict the amount of time it will take for deliveries to be made. Okay. So if you go through the web page on the uh, info, you see a lot of details about the company, about what the solution is going to be used for, and the rest. So since we just have a very few minutes, I think less than 30 minutes, I'm just going to quickly run through this. But you can come to this page and get all the details. So you can come here and get the data, train, test, riders, variable definition, submission file. You can download each of these. So you download each of these and put them in a folder, a particular folder. Create your notebook and let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to quickly switch to my notebook here. I have prepared a notebook for this class already. So I'm just going to quickly run through it and uh, we'll be very fast because we don't have much time. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, so basically what are we doing? So what we are doing is we are going to get the data which which we downloaded from here, all the data. We're going to do some basic preprocessing and um, feature extraction, and then we're going to um, um, encode our features, process it, just basic basic feature engineering, very very basic, so that it won't take much time. And then we are going to do some modeling and then we're going to submit our prediction. So everything is just going to be under maybe like 25 minutes. So you can see that you can actually do something like a quick prototype of a particular problem in under 25 minutes. So something very fast. Okay, so we're not going to do any high level visualization and stuff like that. So we're just going to basically do some processing. All right, so let's go, let's get started. So the first thing is to um, import your libraries. So we're going to use pandas, we we'll use numpy, we we'll use matplotlib for plotting. Um, I'm not sure we're going to plot, so I might as well remove this guy. So pandas and numpy, pandas for working with structured data like CSV data. Numpy for doing some little mathematical computations on um, arrays. Then data is a library I built that we can help us do some quick prototype. If you were supposed to do this um, walk through this notebook from end to end from data ingestion to modeling you're going to take a lot of time but we're going to be using data sys that help us to quickly prototype so that's why so data sys can be uh, installed you just go to data sys on google the first link here on pypy or oh, this is the github repo so you can come here and uh, yeah so people install data sys all the details are here, even documentation are here. You can quickly get that. Okay, so all right, let's do that. Let's continue. But uh, to, to be quick, if you don't have it, you can just quickly do this from here pip install data assist. Okay, so it's basically going to install. I already have that, so it's just going to tell me requirements already satisfied and the rest. 
All right, so let's move. So now we read in the data set. So remember, we have train, the riders, the test, the variable definition, and sub submission, just like we have here. Okay, so let's move on. So we're reading the train, the test, and that. Now the variable definition contains all the details about each particular column. Okay, so you have user ID, vehicle type, platform type, business, or personal business placement. So these like these are like the details for the particular order. So who, who placed the order? Who is the user? What type of vehicle are they using? Platform type. There are, I think there are about four platforms according to the data set. Is it personal business? When was it placed? The day of the month? When was it placed? The weekday? The time? Confirmation time? So these are all features. You can see arrival, destination, distance, temperature. So these are all features that can actually help us like kind of estimate how long the rider will take to deliver a particular product. So for the riders data set, I think it just contains, uh, we're going to look at that, but I think it's going to contain details about the riders, like the ratings of the rider, how many ratings the rider has, has gotten before, and stuff like that. So all this can help us make predictions. Okay, so now let's just quickly have an overview of what the train data set is like, okay? So using data assist, um, you can just quickly describe this data, you know? In pandas, we have pd.describe, and to give you just like a brief statistical description of the model of the data set. But in, with using data assist, you can just say ds.structured data is a module that contains everything that has to do with data frames and structured data. So ds.structured.describe, passing the name of the data. So this is chain df, which is what we read in here, which is this guy here. Okay, so we describe it now. You can see we have the first five points, and you can see we have other number. These are like the first, this is like the head of the data time from pickup to arrival. And this is what we are trying to predict time from pickup to arrival. This is what we are trying to predict. So you can see, I think it's a second, it's in seconds. So 745. So this means this particular order will take this particular amount of time or took this particular amount of time to deliver. So this is what we are trying to predict on the test set, okay? All right, so this is the first five data points. You can see we have some dates. We have some time features. There's categorical features. We have numerical features and the rest. Then also this, uh, I told you that this describe function from data sets will give you like a full description of the data. So you don't have, you just have to go through it and study it. So it will also give us random five data points from somewhere in the middle. So you can see how distributed the data is. So you can even see we have some missing values in this particular features and the rest. Then the last five also to show you the last five data points in case you want to do something like with that. So you can see we have 21,200 features or samples. So to also give you the size of the data. So you can see we have 29 features and 21,201. Because this is starting from one, this is starting from zero. So that's why. The size of the data then also what type of data is present in it okay so the object the data types so you can see we have other number user id and object 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 means they are strings you no know, pandas represent of uh, strings with objects then we have in 64 which is integer and the rest i don't think we have any float okay we have floats here and the rest so this gives you an idea that okay this particular id is a is a is a string and we have to encode it or we have to process it like that okay so also it tells you all the numerical features present in data sets so you can see all these features are on numerical features and all these are categorical features so you can see that this the, the describe function from data sets actually gives you like a, a, a quick overview you can quickly get an understanding of your data very quickly by just using that instead of having to type these commands one after the other using pandas okay then you have a statistical description of the of the model of the data set so you have the counts and the main this is what your normal pandas describe function is going to give to you okay so you can see it's an addition to that so from here you can get description like an an idea of how your data is distributed what is the maximum value what is the minimum value what is the count so from here you can even see let's see um temperature now look at the count of temperature you can see so that this tells us that they are missing values in temperature if you look at precipitation also this tells us they are missing values in precipitation but the other ones are actually the same so you can get an idea from this so now we now know that they are missing values present in that 
all right also for categorical features you can see the counts and the unique unique values in them so for example for the riders we have just 924 unique riders across the whole data set okay and um, for other number unique 21201 is the same thing with the count so meaning this feature is not going to be useful to us because the um, counts and the unique values they are actually the same so it's not going to be useful to us so we are going to drop this particular feature then for user id we have about 3186 users who have placed order so many users place order um um consistently or repeatedly repeatedly <laughs> sorry repeatedly okay so because if we have just 3186 users in this particular data set and we have 21201 order it means these users make orders repeatedly so meaning this is going to be an important id uh, important feature because if we know the f the, the, the um the, the, the old time it took to deliver a particular product to a particular user we can use that to kind of estimate how long it will take to deliver a new product to that same place so this id i'm sure is going to be very useful then we have vehicle type vehicle type has just one unique feature okay so meaning everything is the same throughout so it's not going to be useful to us so notice note that so we are dropping order number vehicle type personal business okay this is two so these are okay these are all time features okay so as expected the time feature is going to be very different we are going to use them then unique class and feature okay this is what we did we just visualize it here that's what data is going to do for you then missing values okay now let's see um, you see zero 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 zero. Then we can see that the temperature and precipitation in millimeters, which we've seen before or observed before, has lots of missing values. This one has about ninety seven percent missing values. So there are many things that you can do. You can fill it. There are many methods you can use to fill this particular guy. This one has lots of missing values, so you might chop it or you might still just fill it. But ninety seven. That's high. Okay, so. That's, that's an experiment so you can either try dropping and checking your accuracy or your uh, models results or performance and see if it is better when you drop or when you don't drop so those are things that you can try so that's for the train set so you can also do the same thing for the test set but since the test set and the train set are similar we're just going to quickly run through this so the same thing the shape but now notice something we have 25 here for features 25 and for the um think for the sorry that sorry about that sound that's my mouse yeah we have 29 so you can see there are extra four features on the train set that are not in the test set so if we consider the um if we consider the label which is this guy you know this label is not going to be in the test set so if we subtract the label from that meaning we are supposed to be having that means there are three features present here in the train set that is not in the test set so take note of that because we are going to have to balance that because you cannot have different number of features in the train and the test set okay so every other thing the same thing the numerical features description you can also go that so we're going to be very fast all right now the next one is the rider's id now you can see the rider's data frame has the rider id the number of orders this particular rider has taken in the past you can see this is 2946 then the age of the rider meaning how long has the rider joined the organization okay then the average rating the rider has received and the total number of ratings the rider has received this is going to be an important feature or an important data set for us to, to combine with our training set because this will tell us details about the rider if the rider is somebody that has received a, a high rating before it's probably because the rider delivers on time okay so also if for example it's my you might surprise that the age of the rider determines how well the rider can even deliver a product so maybe the, if the older divider, the more experience the rider has gotten and the more quicker the person is able to deliver a particular product. So this might all be important features. So meaning we have to merge this particular data set with our train and test set. Okay. So, mean, so how do we merge them? Now remember this rider ID that is on this uh, rider's data frame is also present in the train and test. I think I saw it yet. Rider ID, Rider ID, Rider ID. Yeah, yeah. So you can see, so many they have two features in common. So this is the key that we're going to use to merge two of them together.
okay so that's the first thing we're going to do we mesh each the training data and the test data with the rider id okay so that's what we are doing here all right so um train that merge pandas function what are we measuring on rider id on riders data frame sorry on what so you specify the particular key so this is the key so rider id how left now why are we using left because train data frame is the most important one to us this is what we want so we want this guy to be complete so meaning we are going to take all the values from here that match all the values here are you following so if there's a particular rider here in this data frame in this guy that is not here we don't want it that's why we are specifying left Okay, so take note of that. So then we we'll do the same for test set. Remember, if you are processing your data, anything you do on the training set, you should also do it on the test set. Okay. All right, so let's move on. So now we've meshed that. We're on that particular column, and we have this. So you can see. Uh, go to the ending. You now have the rider ID, the number of orders, the age, the average rating, and the number of rating. So for this particular order, if we are going to take this first one. For this particular order, this is the rider that made the that made the delivery. This is how long the rider took. This is the number of orders the rider has delivered in the past. This is the age of the rider. This is the average rating, and this is the number of ratings. So we've measured it successfully. Okay, so right now we've done that. Now remember, we saw that the training set had some features that the test set did not have. Okay, so many we have to look at those. what are those features. So I looked over all the columns in the training set which all the, all the features and i checked which one is not in the test set so that's what i basically did here then i saved it into this codes drop okay so you can see arrival destination arrival destination arrival destination time and time from pickup to arrival so you can see these are the features that are not in the test set and it is actually correct not to be in the test set because if you know the arrival destination time if this is in test set, meaning the problem is solved already because you know the time the product arrived. So you just subtract time of arrival from time of order placement and you get this guy. Okay? Sorry about that. That's my uh, grammar. I'm going to switch it off now. All right. Okay. So, so that's why this data set, these are particular features are not present in the test set because if they are present, you already know your answer. Okay, so we're going to drop these three guys from the train set so that our train set will be balanced with the test set. And this is our label, so we know what to do with that. Okay, so um, now remember this is not also in the train in the test set, so it's going to be added to this particular list. So we have to remove it first. Okay, so we remove that and um, we drop all the column from the train set. Then um, what did we do here? Train merge the job. Okay, we also drop the other number. Remember, I told you the other number is as lots. All the features are different. So about over, over twenty one thousand. Um, I think I'm going to close this guy so that you can quickly scroll. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, am I going to? Okay, yeah. Um, categorical feature. Yeah, yeah. So you can see we have 21,201 unique features. So meaning everything is different totally. So it's not going to be useful. So we drop it here as well. So we drop it from the training set. We also drop it from the test set. Okay. Um, there's no need for this. So I can remove it. All right. So we drop from the train. We drop from the test as well. Good. Now, now let's look at the shape of both the train and the test. So you can see we now have 29 here, we have 28 here. So I mean that extra one feature in the training set is the um, label. Okay, so later we're going to separate it from the training set, but for now we are good to go. We have 29 of these and 28 of this. Okay, so let's quickly move on. So now remember we also saw that we have two missing values, two features that have missing value, which is the um um, temperature and um, I think precipitation yeah temperature and precipitation in millimeters okay so we're going to fill them now there are different ways you can actually fill but because we are trying to be very fast to quickly prototype you can use the data assist feature engineering function so the feature engineering function just do this that feature engineering dot fill missing numerical this is fill missing num so maybe there's also another one for filling of categorical features fill missing cuts 
okay so for this it's going to take your data set i'm going to check for which particular feature has a missing values it's going to use the mean to fill it okay so meaning is that you're going to calculate the mean of that particular row or sorry that particular column and use it to fill that particular column okay so if you're going to do this in pandas you have to first of all calculate the mean of the particular feature then you use fill na but if you're using data sets you can just quickly do this in one line so it takes care of everything if you have 10 missing 10 features with missing values going to look for the 10 features by itself and use the mean method so this is just actually a quick method so there are different ways you can do that maybe you can maybe you may want to use mode for a particular feature and want to use median just like that so you cannot do that manually but with this we just want to get a quick prototype of our solution so we'll do that for the training set was we'll for the test set okay so calculate the mean now let's check again if we have missing values and we don't so we're good to go okay so to the next step now in the next step okay we just printed the ads that we can see now you can see we have time features like placement confirmation however at pick up pick up and blah 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 those features so we're going to actually extract information from those particular features okay so the meaning the next part of that of our analysis of our of our processing is to extract time features from this so if this is a particular time we can get the hour of the day from it we can get the minutes we can get the seconds and this can help us help our model actually predict okay so also if you are going to be doing that in pandas you can do first of all convert the data or the the feature to a time column or a time feature then you start using a pandas to extract each of the feature you want I mean, if you want hour you can start extracting hours but you can quickly do that i told you as, again data sets has been built to save your time so you can quickly just extract that particular feature using ds dot time series dot extract time so you pass in the data set then you pass in the time column so you can see these are all the time columns that we have in our data set passing the time columns and we automatically extract the hour the minute and the day so if you look at the documentation you can see it will extract um, let's see yeah this hours minutes and seconds from this particular time feature remember this is a time feature not a date feature okay date is going to be having months year and the rest this is time feature okay so but if you want to do for date feature there's also an extract date function in data sets that you can use so we do that and let's quickly move oh god my time <laughs> we're out of time okay so uh now we cannot see it as extracted and it's going to automatically drop or remove the columns but if you don't want that you can specify there's if uh this thing specify job because to force and to not chop the feature for you but automatically it's going to do that so you can see it has chopped the feature and if you scroll down you see these are the columns it has added for pickup, it got the ten, it got the hour, minute, and the second. For arrival, the same thing. So it's going to do that, merge it back into your data frame, and return the data frame for you. So this is what we have. Okay, so we're almost ready with our processing. Now, what is next? We have some categorical features in our data. So now the next thing is to encode them. All right. So processing of categorical features. All right. So you have. Um, so first of all, before we process our categorical features, we can actually merge the train and the test set together so that we perform the um, processing of categorical features at once. It's going to be easier and sometimes it's going to save you in case you have a particular key or a particular category that is in your training set that is not in your test set. Sorry, that is in your test set that is not in your training set. Sometimes we are trying to label and code those kind of features. I'm going to give you error because a particular category that is in your test set is not in your training set so it's good to just mesh both together before you do some encoding so what type of encoding we are going to be using remember there are different types of encoding label encoding you can use label encoding when you have a lot a, when a particular feature has lots of categories then you can use maybe one not encoding when you when the particular feature has a limited number of categories maybe like two three four and five okay so now let's look at our categorical features we have user id vehicle type personal or business and rider id so remember from here you can see rider id it's a string personal or business you can see vehicle type and user id so these are all the categorical features that we have but remember some have lots of categories more than others 
So for the ones that have lots of categories, the best thing to do is to use label encoding. There are different type of encoding schemes you can use, but this is just a simple class. So you can start with label encoding. If your feature has lots of categories, for example, your rider ID and the user ID, they have lots of different users, over 3,000. So it's better to just use label encoding for that. Then for, for a vehicle type, remember, we saw that vehicle type has just one, yeah, just one feature. So we actually dropped it. So you can see we dropped it because that's just one feature. It's not going to, not going to be useful. So we drop it. Then for um, for personal or business, we have just two class, business and personal. So we can actually one not encode this guy. And you can see for user ID is telling you that it's too large. Data sets will tell you that you can use this class count to get it. Data sets will tell you that user ID is too large. Then for rider ID also too large. So these are, are the columns or the features that we are going to label and code. Okay. All right. So we import label encoder from SKLN. We specify the two features I want to label encode, which is rider ID and user ID. Then we loop over them fits and transform using the label encoder so let's look at the data set again you can see user id that we assigned a numerical value rider id rider id uh yes that rider id yeah okay so please don't this should not confuse you i'm actually transposing i'm actually transposing the data frame normally it's supposed to be like this but i don't want to be scrolling like sideways that was why i actually just transpose it so in case you've not seen this before so, so the columns are now on the whole side and like that all right so let's move so we've done the one on the label encoding for the, the categories that the features that have large number of categories and we have just one categorical feature left which is um i think that should be personal or business which have just two classes which is this guy so we're going to use pandas one encoding to encode that particular feature Okay, so we use get dummies. So get dummies is going to encode just it's going to look for the, the categorical feature in the data set and will not encode it for us. Okay, so finally um let's check the shape. After doing everything, the shape is 37. We now have 37 features. Okay, so including the including the um targets, that's 37. So if we subtract the target, that's like 36 features. Okay, so you cannot check all the data types. Now you see everything is now integer, float. Int, 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 and the rest. So, meaning we are okay and ready for modeling. Why? Because all our features are now in numerical form. Okay? So, let's move on. Okay, so now this is just, I told you, as I, as I said earlier, this is just a simple class. So, we're not going to do any extensive feature engineering because there are lots and lots and lots of feature engineering that you can do for this. Okay, for your from your time features, you can get other time features. You can subtract, you can add, you can get the speed of the bike man because you have time here yeah, and you have distance. I think there's a distance feature. Distance, yeah, there's a distance. You have time, you have distance. You can actually calculate the speed that the particular driver is is, is taking, and that can help you to predict time of arrival. So there are lots of things that you can actually do here, but we are just going to keep this simple because of time. I think my time is almost up. Yeah. All right, so, uh, so now we can just move straight to modeling. So this is the data set. This is all the features that we have. All right, so let's put the data for modeling. So for you to model, you need to have the train and you need to have a validation set, right? Okay. Then, then we also need to do something called standardization or normalization of the data. Okay. So sometimes it helps your model, it helps your model perform or train faster if you standardize your data. So we'll do that as well. So first is to get back our chain and test sets. Remember, we mesh them. We mesh them into all into one data set. So now, if you notice, we are we are we mesh them. We use a function from data sets to perform the meshing. Yeah, this is it. See, you have ds dot structure data dot join train and test set. Pass in a training set and a test set. Then to return three values all the data that it has meshed and the number of training set and number of test set. So this number of training set is what we are going to use to cut out our train set here since we know the number. So you see in all of the data I want you to cut out from the first one to the not to end train. Okay? And for the test set cut from end train to the ending. So we will get cutting back our train and test set. Now remember the label you are going to be training your model you have to drop your label okay so we save our label into this 
particular fee available called labor then we drop it from the training and the test set now remember your this feature was not originally in the test set okay it was when we merged them together that was how this feature joined so when we, sorry when we merge them together this feature is going to be in all data because training set has it tester does not have it but when you merge it's going to add it together and just add for the part of test sets i think i should just print this out quickly for the part of test set it's going to be null values so you can head this is for time of pickup to arrival time of pickup to arrival here's it pickup time minutes oh sorry i think i should do should print out that particular one, yeah. Dot head. So you have this, okay? Now if I if I print the last part dot t, I'm going to see null none. You see, because this is the test portion of it. Okay, so please take note of that. So that's why we're also dropping it from there. But originally it was not in the test set. All right, so we have this now. You can see the shape twenty one thousand thirty six. 706836. Now we have 36 and 36 in both the train and the test set. Why? Because we separated the label. So we are good to go. Alright, so in the next part, we split. Now remember, this test set is what we are actually predicting on. We don't know the answer. It was gotten from um, Zindi. So once you make your prediction, once you train your model and you make your prediction on this test set, you submit and you get your score. But locally, how do we know how well our model is performing? is by splitting our training set again into train and validation so we just reserve a small portion of the training set for validation okay so and that helps us to know locally before we submit to, to zindi it helps us to know locally how well our model is performing okay so please take note of that so that's why we are doing this splitting here so we use the sklm model selection train test split splits passing the training data the label then the test size so you can see i'm using just 0.2 percent which is 20 percent of the training data for i'm reserving 20 percent of the training data for validation okay then specify a random state so that you can actually run this again so after splitting you can now see that we have 16,960 for training data and we've removed 4,241 for test okay so please take note of that all right so now the next thing is to standardize it standardize we just uh, compress the values into a particular range sometimes between zero and one okay so meaning all these features uh yeah can i see that can i yeah so you can see for user id we have about three thousand three seven six a particular user id why for platform type you have three so you can see the, the scale is actually very far and different so for um models that uh distance affects because there are some distance based model this can actually cause some kind of slow training it can actually cause the um accuracy to be to be kind of low or the performance to be low so it is better to standardize the data so that both all the features are within the same range okay so that's why we are actually doing that standardization yeah so how do you standardize there are different algorithms you can use there's a standard scalar there's mean mass scalar and the rest so in this part we're using the standard scalar so first of all create an object from it that you fit to just the training set not to the train and test set okay so to fit to this and to transform train and the validation set so this is the data s train scale and s train test x test scale or oh, i should have called it x var I think I should call it X var. Yeah, X var scaled. All right, now we'll go to the modeling part. Now, there are lots of models that you can use, okay? You can start simple, try to get to use linear regression, which is this. It's like one of the simplest regression model. I remember this is a regression tax. That's why we're using regression models. If it were to be a classification task, you use classification models, okay? So we start, we import linear regression, also, we are, we bought some tree models, which is like decision tree, extract tree. These are popular tree models. Then we import some ensemble models like random forest, extract tree, and gradient boosting model. I'm just going to keep things simple and try these particular models and see which one is best or which one is better. 
okay then our metric from uh, zindi uh, i think in the info evaluation yeah i said the metric for this problem is the root mean squared error okay so meaning um, you can actually import the mean squared error from SQLearn matrix. Then we'll now calculate the roots of that because this is root mean squared. So just calculate the square root of the mean squared error. Okay. So SQLearn does not have a particular function for root mean squared error. So they can give you the mean squared error. Then from there you can calculate your square root by yourself. So we use NumPy for that. Okay. So that's what we did here. We wrote a simple function that just takes the two values and the predicted values from our model, calculate the mean squared error, and then takes the square root on that. Okay, so we have that. So now let's, this year we tried the linear regression model, and you can see, just create an object from linear regression model, then lr.fit. Now SKLearn models, which are all these models, follow the same pattern, follow the same API. There's the fit, where the model performs the training. There you pass in your training and your label then there is the predict okay so you can fit and predict so all the models you'll be creating from sklearn follow this particular api pattern all right so we fit we should we pass in our train and our y train which is this ones that we split y x train and y train okay then for validation after training for validation we pass in for predicting we pass in our x var and then we'll calculate the rmsc oh i'm passing in sorry I'm passing in wait, what did I need? X scaled, yeah. I'm supposed to pass in the one I scaled, not the original one. Um let's see. Yeah. It's supposed to be this. Okay, let's see that will improve the score. Whoa, it actually increased it. It's on four. Uh -huh. So you can see, even the scaling does did not affect the linear model. Did I scale properly? Yeah, S string, X string. Okay, I think I should start from here. All right, it's fourteen. It actually in, uh, did not improve it. It actually even gotten worse. <laughs> it, it got worse. So you can see that's why I told you that scaling sometimes helps your model, especially distance-based model. Your linear regression is not a distance-based model, so your scale does not even affect it. Okay, so let's just take this bar. All right, so we have that. Then um, for decision tree, I also tried this. We got 782, which is better than this guy, 789. So let's see. Let me see if scaling will also is not going to affect it. I'm very sure of that because these are all. Uh, regression these are all three three models and uh, linear regression models they are really affected by scale see the same thing so there's no difference so it's two seven it's two okay then for extra tree the same thing these are these are all simple models they are tree based so not affected by scale but still going to add that eight oh five see no difference then for random forest, random forest is based on trees, so it's just an ensemble of lots of trees. It's just combining lots of trees together. So this decision tree is just a single tree. Why random forest is taking those decision tree and combining lots of them together to make prediction. So it's using something called the knowledge or the wisdom of the crowd. So if 10 people agree on this particular number, it means that number is probably correct. So most of the time, random forest, in fact, not most of the time, I think almost all the time, Random forest is always better than decision trees. Okay, so this n estimator is the number of trees you want to use. So I'm using 150 decision trees. So you can see how large that is, and sometimes it takes time to run. So that's why even the better the model, the more time it takes to run. So I'm using this. I'm creating 150 of this tree to do this prediction. Okay, so I'm not sure scaling is going to affect it, but I'm still just going to add it here. So I'm creating, let's start with 100. Let's start with 100 tree. Then the maximum depth, so you know a tree has leaves, leaves under it. So the maximum depth is like how many leaves do you want, how many nodes do you want a leaf to have? So that's the mean of this maximum depth here. Okay. So let me run this. Seven, the previous one was 782. So you can see it's not taking time. Why? Because it's going to create 100 of this particular decision tree. 
so we have 782 did not change uh, let me increase this to 200 it's going to take more time to run okay so as that is running I'm going to show you gradient boosting regressor now gradient boosting is different from random forest in the way the in the way it's actually builds the model or in the way it combines the decision trees because gradient boost is going to be combined decision trees as well as random forest you can see it did not even improve so particularly almost the same thing so i think even the 100 is better so let's just leave it there because of time so for gradient boosting it uses gradient descent if you know about deep learning but if you don't know you just forget about it but it, is, it uses a different method or a different type of algorithm in training these particular trees or in combining these particular trees okay so for gradient boosting let's try 150 you can see the score is 746 it's actually lower but let me just try 200 and see if it's going to be better and also this gradient boosting is going to be affected by scale yeah it does because it uses gradient descent so let's put that so it's going to take some time so we have 200 trees gradient boosting and let's see so far i think this 782 which one is the best model so far yeah i think decision tree and random forest are kind of the same remember we can improve random forest by supplying more estimators and also there are lots of other parameters that you can also fix you can see there are lots of parameters that you can tune and fine tune but there's no time for that so i'm just going to leave that so currently this is the best okay now you can see gradient boosting gave us 743 so this is our best model so far and there are lots of other models that you can use there's sg boost very popular it's light gbm very fast there's cut boost and the rest but this is just a simple tutorial to just give you an head start okay since gradient boosting gave us our best score we are going to retrain it using all the data sets this time remember we train it with just a subset so we can evaluate it locally now that we know that this is actually our best model so far we cannot train with a full data set and predict on the test sets okay so for we take our full training our full labor and pass it to it and it's going to train for some time then we take our test set and predict on it so this is the prediction from the test set and you can see these are all the predictions in array format so our model now how do we know how well it's performing we have to submit to zindi first to know how well this model is doing because we don't have the answer locally okay so to prepare a submission file, remember Zindi on the Zindi platform they gave a sample submission file. Okay, so you can see this is the sample submission file. I think my sorry my sub that to my type yeah third. this is supposed to be dot copy. I'm just copying the file because I've already imported the file on top. Um, if we go back here. So yeah, I imported it here. Okay, so I'm just going to make a copy of it quickly. Make a copy of it and show the head. And you can see this is the head. So we have the order which is in the test sets. This is a, these are the orders in the test set, and this is the uh, just a sample arrival time that they put there for us. So we're going to replace this this arrival time with the ones we have predicted with our model. Okay, so that's what we did here. So we change my sub of this guy. So we are changing this guy and passing in our own the one we predicted here. So if you look at the if you print it out head again, so you can see we've replaced it with our own. Okay, that's what we have here. That's our prediction. Okay, so then we now convert this guy to CSV. So I'll call it my first submission. So it's going to save in this particular folder in same folder as your files. So this is what we are going to be submitting to Zindi. So I submitted this already. So if you come here, the, the challenge is over, but you can actually just get a score. So if you register for this competition, you can click get a score. Come here, drag the, um, take the submission file, click submit and to show you your score. So this, you can see this is just a simple model. Yeah, this is the one I submitted earlier. So you can see 740 for just, under how many minutes that you did this kind of prototyping you already got this kind of score so it's actually very okay so there are lots of things that you can do to improve this model like i told you before if you go to the zindi platform 740 go to the zindi platform under discussions 
you see lots of notebooks that people have submitted you can see like this is the fifth place solution so you can see 702 wow now look at that 702 and look at what we submitted earlier 740 so you can see the difference is not even far and we did this under <laughs> how many minutes going less than 30 minutes okay maybe more than 30 minutes okay so you can see with the right uh two like data system plus a lot actually you can actually just do something very quick then now you can now start focusing on visualization to help you get more insight feature extraction feature engineering and the rest like that so take note of that so you can study this particular solution and because there's a second place solution here so you can study this all these and try to improve this notebook so that's it for for, for the class and uh, I'm sure you've learned something even though I was fast I know I admit I'm, I was very fast because I was trying to beat time and this is not something you can learn in under 30 minutes so please take your time we watch the video download it if you have to download it pause it and just do all these things over and over and over again study the notebook if you have any questions you can always reach out to me on uh, Twitter I, I'm, always, I'm always active on Twitter my username I think I'm just going to type it here although it's going to be shared actually so but my username is uh, rising Odegua. you can shoot questions at me I like answering questions uh, I'm taking more time I'm very sorry for that okay yeah twitter so this is me so you can uh, i write articles a lot so you can also go to my medium page and you see lots of articles i have particular guides for future engineering that you can use on this i have uh, uh tutorials on data sys lots of other tutorials that you can use and also you can also visit the data sys documentation if you want to learn more uh, this is i think this is the old one oh. sorry yeah this is it so no, this is the old one so you, if you come here you can see link to the new doc here and you can, yeah so this is a new one so you can in seven data series quick start guide tutorials and the rest so you can actually learn more here reference is where you can find data your the api reference and the rest so there are lots of things that you can do to improve this model and please do and uh, i would love to hear your feedback so thank you very much and um Bye for now.